Faith. Faith alone. Faith. Salvation is by faith. Through God's grace. We're looking at that dimension of faith just now. And God imparts faith. Faith comes from God. It originates from Him. Do we know authentic faith? Biblical faith? Bible faith? Saving faith? It's a common thread right through. From Genesis through Revelation. Faith. Faith. Someone said this. Faith sees Christ on high enthroned. The cruel cross on which he groaned. The crown which now his brow adorns was once a cruel crown of thorns. And while the ages roll away, faith sees the increase of his sway till crowns and thrones and kingdoms fall and Christ is King and Lord of all. Faith. Faith realises that. Faith grasps that. And faith is granted to man as a response to God. We see in Acts 11, verse 21, it says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. God was present. His hand was upon them. A great number believed, a great number had faith, and turned unto the Lord. We see the response of faith. The response of faith right through the pages of Scripture. The response of faith. I'll put it to you, there's three things we could see in that response of faith. The response of a believing life. Number one is hear Him. Number two is see Him. Number three is trust Him. It starts, number one, with hearing Him. Hear Him. We read in these verses here, in Romans 10, verse 17. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith starts with the Word. It starts with God, with His Word that He gives to us. And faith has an intellectual basis. Faith is not just faith, some airy-fairy kind of faith, some generic kind of faith. It's faith in what God says. It's faith in His truth, upon His true Word. It says in Hebrews 4, and likewise in Hebrews 4, it talks about the Word of God as being alive, as being quick and active, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And likewise in Hebrews 4, it says that the Word is mixed with faith in those who received it. It starts with the Word, and man's faith is prompted, it stirred, it's realised as the Word is preached. And sinner, will you hear him cry? Will you hear him cry through the preacher, Be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God. Be joined together with God. That great divide, that great separation of your sin, that it can be taken, it can be removed. Be ye reconciled to God. His voice is still speaking that today, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. The gospel offer is still extended. The word is still preached, and by his mercy, faith is still being mixed with the word. Hear him. Hear him today. Hear him. Above the deafening crowd of other voices, hear his voice. The gospel offer is still extended. The offer of divine peace and mercy. And we stand in Christ's stead. Every one of you, as you're personally witnessing us was said, as you're <coughs> corporately gathering together, exhorting one another, as you see the day approaching, be ye reconciled to God. We're standing in Christ's stead, in Christ's place. Christ is still pleading with sinners today. We beseech you. As though Christ, as though God did, beseech you by us. Christ is still pleading. He's still inviting. And we stand in his place, extending that invitation. But God does not exercise faith for you. Faith is taking God at his word. It's his word being mixed with faith. And thank God that even we who are dead, dead 
in trespasses and sins, dead as a dodo, dead as a body in a morgue, dead with our foulness of our sin. Yet God, by His grace, can speak to us. And the dead can still hear His voice. Thank God for that. We read of that in John 5. Even we who are spiritually dead can yet have ears to hear. Now the context of John 5 is of course of the raising of the dead of the end days. But we know it can still happen spiritually, I believe today, that you who are dead in trespasses and sins, the dead can hear his voice as it says in John 5, 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So faith, it starts with the Word. Faith is mixed with the Word. Faith is the Word preached and heard. Faith has ears to hear, and faith has eyes to see. There is only one to whom we can look, who has the message, who has that means of life, that one who can save us. As we read in Hebrews 12, verse 2, where it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Faith hears his voice. Faith looks unto Jesus. Looks unto him. Faith comes from him. He is the beginning of it and the ending of it. He is the author and the finisher, the concluder of it, the completer of our faith. And thank God today we can look and live. We can look and live. I think they use it in the electricity industry, don't they? As far as you look and you can live. You've got to watch out for those electric wires. Eh? Uh, you've got to look to be safe. and You've got to look to be saved. You've got to look to Christ to be saved. Look to the blood. Look to that one. Look to that one who became sin for us. Who knew no sin. That one. Look and live. As God's people, we read that in Numbers 21, when Moses uh, lifted up the brazen serpent, this golden uh, brazen serpent on a stick, was a figure, a type, a picture of Christ to come. And it says... When he looketh upon it, he shall live. Numbers 21, verse 8. And it's a type, a picture, a snapshot beforehand of Calvary's cross, of the rugged cross where the bleeding lamb paid for your sin. It's a picture of that. If you can but look, you can live. They saw Calvary before it came to be. Will you look up? Will you look up today? I plead you, plead with you. Look up with the eyes of faith this morning. Look up to Christ today. He says unto you, Isaiah 45, 22, Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Hear him, see him. We have need of faith. We have need of faith. Ever increasing faith. We can't have too much faith. I was just happened to, to turn onto the radio this morning and there was someone speaking about faith and they said, we can't have too much faith. You know, the Lord Jesus never rebuked anyone for having too much faith, did he? We, we need more, more, more of faith. More of him, more of him. Not be as those of little faith. Yet even a grain of mustard seed of faith is something he counts very powerful. Faith. Faith is needed all the way. Faith to toil and faith to pray. Faith to learn and faith to teach. Faith to practice, faith to preach. Faith to start each day anew. Faith to do our duty to. Faith to help the weak along. Faith to bear in patience strong. Faith to smile, though sad within. Faith to conquer every sin. Faith to ask him for his care. While we earthly trials bear. Faith to smother every sigh. Faith to live. And faith to die. The response of faith is to hear him. To see him and to trust him. 
to trust Him. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is both the substance hoped for and the evidence of things not yet visible to the eye. And amazingly though, it be desperately wicked, desperately wicked, the human heart can trust Him. The human heart, man's foul, stained, wicked heart can trust Him still. Thank God, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, though it be inclined to be desperately wicked, though it be deceitful, yet God can transform that heart to a new heart. The object of faith is Christ. The object of faith is Him. And to the question, what must I do to be saved? The answer is still, believe, believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's still the same answer today, this morning, this very moment. That is still the answer for you. If you want to be saved, believe, believe. Faith in Christ is essential. We must trust Him, trust Him. Our faith is from Him and unto Him. Faith is not worked up by our own self, by our own working, that we can claim any credit for it at all. But yet faith must be that response, lest we die. God doesn't repent and believe for us. That response must come from you, for you to be saved. And Christ will receive all who come to Him. John 6, 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. He's the one who knows who will come and where they will come to, to me. And here's the good news. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you will but trust Him, if you will but come unto Him, He says, I will not cast you away. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news today. And it's news for you today. John 5.40 it says, Of some, he says, You will not come to me. Some will not come. That's still true today too. Some still refuse to come. Unbelief is an act of the will. Unbelief is active faith. But unfortunately, it is faith in yourself. Don't have faith in yourself. Don't believe in yourself. Believe in Christ. Believe in Him. Believe in the Saviour. Faith. Faith is the assurance that God's promises will never fail. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. No way in the world will He cast you out if you but come to Him with faith. What is faith? A missionary, John Patton, was in the New Hebrides trying to translate the Gospel of John. And there was a word that he couldn't quite find the native phrase for. He couldn't work out how to translate faith, how to translate believe. What would he use to translate believe? And he was grappling with this and he had to put his, trans his manuscript aside. He had to put his manuscript aside because he couldn't find how to translate believe. And it occurs some 90 times plus in the Gospel of John. How could he translate this word believe? He grappled with it and he had to put the manuscript aside. But one day one of the native workers came. They'd just been out doing some Christian service and they came in to where John Patton was sitting and one of them sat down on a chair and put his feet up on another. He was tired. He'd been doing some strenuous work. And he used a word which meant, I am resting my whole weight on these two chairs. I am resting my whole weight upon these two chairs. And here was a word that John could use. I'm resting my whole weight upon. I have my word, he said, for believe. I'm resting my whole weight upon. 
For example, you could see it in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever resteth his whole weight upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that rest their whole weight upon him. What must I do to be saved? Rest your whole weight upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Will you rest your whole weight upon him? Stop trying to live your own life and do your own thing. Faith is dependence upon God. That is the ultimate. By faith, by faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch was translated. By faith Noah was moved with fear and he built an ark. By faith Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. He offered up Isaac by faith. By faith Sarah received life into her womb. By faith strangers and pilgrims on the earth. By faith Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith Moses forsook Egypt. By faith Moses traversed the Red Sea as by dry land. By faith Rahab, the prostitute, perished not with them that believed not. Faith, 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 faith. It's right through the book, right through from start to end. And it's now faith, faith. Faith lifts, lifts its hand up through the threatening clouds. Lay holds on him who has power in heaven and on earth. Faith makes the outlook bright. Faith makes the outlook good, the inlook favourable and the future glorious. Faith, will you have that response? The response of faith to hear him, to hear his word, to see Christ crucified, to look unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith, Faith to see him, faith to trust him, the response of faith. And think, friends, to close of the result of faith. Faith prompts us to obey him. Obedience is the evidence of true faith. And when you believe, when you trust him, when you're a man, a woman of faith, you will have a fight that you will face. It says that we should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. That we should stand fast in the faith. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Faith is challenging. You have a fight on your hands. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, a faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without, that when in danger knows no fear, in darkness feels no doubt. In those times of testing, that your faith will glow, it will shine, it will radiate. The fight will lead to victory because what is the thing that will overcome the world? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The result of our faith, it will be obedience. It will be a willingness to enter the fight. To realise the victory and the reward of faith is yet to come. The reward of faith. One day we shall see him, not through the eyes of faith, but in reality. The reward of our faith, to see him and we'll be like him. We'll be transformed into his likeness. And we can be, meantime, established in our faith. Grounded, assured, certain, sure. Because faith... It's not a leap into the dark, but a leap into the light. Mm. Faith is a leap into the light. It's a certain hope. We've got God's sure word, his certain promise. Friends, consider your stand now. Consider the quality, the condition of your faith. When testing times come, will it shine stronger, brighter, Will you stand firmer, more resolute? Is it authentic faith, living faith, growing faith, personal faith? 
In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7 it says, we ought to abound in faith. Faith should abound. It should flourish. We should walk by faith. So that the steps that we take are not just on a Sunday morning, but through our life. That we will walk by faith. We will live by faith. Every step in concert with him, in union with Christ, and that we'll build up ourselves on our most holy faith. Jude 1 verse 20. Friends, it's a growing living relationship. Faith! This is not faith in some idol, in some philosophy of man, in some religious system. It's faith in a living saviour who wants to know you and you to know him. A relationship that you can grow in and mature in. To recap the response of faith. Don't close your ears. You must hear him. You must hear him. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Open these pages and seek his face. Seek to know him more. The response of faith to hear him, to look unto him, to see him, to trust him. The result is obedience, it's fight, it's victory. And the reward is your union with Christ, your eternal relationship with him, never dying, never ending, eternal, everlasting. Faith realises that wonderful relationship. And you have that wonderful assurance that he promises everlasting life as you trust him. You have rest in Christ. Friends, I urge you, Christians, non-Christians, this message is to us all. And Christians, you're his messenger. Take the message. We've been challenged already. There's a word. And it's on your lips. It's in your hands. Share it. Don't hold it to yourself. Pass it on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you that we have the joy of believing. Lord, we thank you for the mercy undeserving sinners such as we can have everlasting life. Life more abundant. Life eternal. We can't fathom it, Lord, why you would deign to come. That you would lay your life down. But most of all, to bear sinful man's sin. Such as we, Lord, we praise you for that. We thank you, Lord, for the mercy and grace that you go to us. Help us to hear you, to see you, to trust you, to follow you. Help us not to be stirred away from, not to falter, to walk strong, to grow stronger in that faith. Help us, Lord, to grow, that our faith not be dying but flourishing and ever-growing. Help each one, if they have doubts, to find faith. Help us, Lord, if there's any here present that have yet to trust you for that very first moment of salvation. They've yet to see that wonder of it all and realise it personally. Lord, we pray that each one might know that today, to have that assurance of everlasting life by your great work of Calvary's cross, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.